Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another season of Blood Bowl. This season I will be going through Clan Scurvy again. Brand new season coming up, I have my coach hat on. I have my few tactics to think about after last season. Last season wasn't a bad season, it's just we had a lot of draws. We only had three wins. So this year I really, really want to push for promotion. I want to get high enough to qualify for the Mega Cup. And with the brand new season we have the pit which is the stadium we have that is upgraded to a level 2 so it's bigger again and of course in the first game of the season who else would we be playing only the unstoppable mashers and our nemesis from last season when we played these last year or last season they destroyed us we got a draw out of the game but there's just they are a powerhouse they're, they're just pure muscle there's no skill with these guys they'll just go straight through you so I was a bit nervous coming into this game it's the first home game as well as the first uh, game of the season and I really really wanted to get off to a good start. Now after playing the game a bit more I'm getting more and more familiar with how the game actually works itself. So with a few tactics coming into this game I was thinking about, uh, I was getting really worried these guys are strong, they're tough, they'll hurt you, they'll injure players, they'll kill players. That's how the Blood Bowl works. Everyone knows what it's like. It's a brutal game. So, what I was thinking was to play the avoidance game. And you'll see this changing over the course of this game, especially the first half. I really wanted to play the avoidance game. The thing that Skaven are known for in Blood Bowl, they're incredibly fast. You get the ball onto a gutter runner, and they can easily sprint halfway through that field. So, I really wanted to play the avoidance game. If I could get the ball try and find a way around their team or if they have the ball literally make it in such a way that they can only hit you one or two times per turn now if you're not familiar with the rules of football there is 16 turns each per team and um, there is no uh, point kicks it's only touchdowns it's very familiar to very familiar to american football but a lot more bloody a lot more violent of course so we started off, um, I chose to receive the ball, I thought if I can get a good run at a touchdown I will take it, I'm going to have to try and get an early lead. Uh, but these guys come out hitting strong, I'm trying to keep my re-rolls until I really need them. The two things I really want to keep the, uh, the re-rolls on the pocket hurry for is for a death um, and the re-rolls for when I really need it. Now this guy's charging in here, he's trying to hit my um, good runner. But he has the dodge skill, so he is dodging the hit. He's not losing the ball. But he's getting pushed out to the side. He's very close to that sideline. And if you get pushed out of that sideline, you're gone. Your guy is out on the sideline, you lose the ball, and it gets randomly thrown back in. So you want to try and avoid that as much as I can. Um, once again, I'm playing with three good runners. I added ink, a kind of standard team when I started off. There was only two. I definitely wanted to add a next one in and I did that last season. So it's turn 3 for me now. I'm still in position of the ball We're on the right hand flank. Um, and when you have the ball the main thing you want to do is keep your guys protected. I wanted this guy surrounded completely by my Skaven guys. Skaven, do you really think Skaven are a team based... Uh, a team based... What's the word I'm looking for? This is brilliant commentary. Um, they're not team based society let's put it that way something like that they're out for uh, they look out for themselves individually so, um, so I'm running up I'm going uh, the two extra squares that's called going the distance you can fall when you do that but I took the risk I needed to get that gamble and I needed him to go up to that pitch as far as he could so I had enough run as you can see that was a good runner who has the ball and this is the other gutter runner that's running up to try and keep him protected for the next turn. They can move very far. Now the way the rules work if you try and run past the guy that's in a square next to you there's a chance they can try and hit you and you won't get it and then lock you down and that's exactly what happened here. My guy got hurt and it, you get to use the apothecary once per game unless you have an extra one but I didn't use it yet. I need to keep it in case someone gets seriously injured. Um, turn three to the mashers and um, basically they're just moving everyone up to try and get the ball this guy's charging in to hit him uh, he doesn't get the hit my guy hits him but he uses his reroll he gets the attack in and he does push me out of the sideline unfortunately yeah so that was my gutter runner lich i think 
very unfortunate to lose it there but the ball does get thrown really far back and that's really good for me because their closest three players to that ball have already moved they can't move again this turn so it's guaranteed for this turn that no one is getting the ball for the rest of this turn big hit there on one of my gutter runners these guys are so strong he get not a serious injury he's just stunned it's mammoth uh one of my favorite players it's okay he's down um you can see a push here going through that's not too bad as far as the game goes the there is a lot of pushing in it the, um, i think i got very fortunate like that throughout the game and you will see it they got a lot of pushes uh, they didn't get a lot of armor breaks, so I was very fortunate that way. Now, I hear I have uh, two chances of dodging the ball to try and get it. And I think it's a risk that I have to take, because if I don't try and get it this turn, they definitely will. I dodge the three players, I run straight up. Now, you have to roll on the dice to try and pick it up. Uh, but the good runners have safe hands as well, or the dodge skill, but they're pretty good at it. When we get the ball, we get the touchdown. Nick gets his first touchdown of the season. That makes it 1 0 to Clan Scurry against the Unstoppable Masters. That is an excellent start to the game. Brilliant start to the season so far. Um, getting a lead early against these, guys, against these guys is definitely a bonus. We really need it. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the season, um, we did upgrade the stadium. We didn't get any commodities, I think it's called, which is you can get like a, like a magic wizard and all that stuff to go on the sideline, but I didn't have enough gold really, so gold is kind of hard to get in this unless you're winning, and we only won three last year. My record last season was three wins and like four draws or something like that. You don't get anything for a draw or very little. Um, so I did have enough at the end of last season to upgrade the stadium to a level 2-1. Um, here we go, it's Clan Scurvy's turn 5. Um, now this is where my tactics kind of change from playing the avoidance game, having guys really spread out and try and limit the damage I can take off, or limit the damage I can take from the Unstoppable Masters. I really went for the, the kind of the group, the clan kind of tactic where I'm punching everyone together because when you're attacking, the way it works, you get like these kind of squares you'll see there. To get a bonus when their own guys are in that square so i really wanted to go for the clan mentality here keep them all together Just try and stop guys from getting big hits against them and to help my guys get big hits i really wanted to utilize that this season because i'm more familiar with the game i really have my coach hat on this season i was really excited to get into it uh now it's been a while since i played the game i was a little bit rusty i had to have a practice game before this it went well. So here we receive another big hit on my thrower. It's T, he's injured. Um, the injury is he misses next game. But I think for now, yeah, he's out. I didn't use the apocatory, I wasn't sure. He is gonna be out for the next game, my thrower. That's not too bad because I really didn't want to use a thrower a whole lot. It was a nice option to have. But it's risky, it's very risky in this game to use it to base your players on a thrower. Here we have Big Crunch, the Rat Ogre, trying to get a few hits in. Uh, he does get Frenzy, so he gets another goal and he knocks the guy down. No injuries, just knocked down, that's it. Uh, it's turn 6 now still for the Clan Scurvy. They have moved, their, they got the ball, so they moved their guy over to the left. I try and get past this beast man. Unfortunately, I don't, and I really feel like I had to use my reroll here. So I tried, so I used the reroll, tried to get past him again, and unfortunately it doesn't work. So it's a turnover. Um, to the unstoppable masters and it's their turn six as you can see they're starting to move over to the left a little bit so i've moved my guys over and um, as you can see i have four guys here in a row i'm really trying to keep them all bunched together um to limit the damage uh he's used his re-roll re-roll re he used his re-roll here early in his turn uh, unfortunately for him he got the skull on the dice that means that he hits himself and it gets a turnover to clan scurvy um, so it's kind of after breaking down into two sections on the left side you have a lot of guys you have the ball carrier and my guys trying to bunch in there and on this side see with the big rat over it's kind of hard to move with him um so i try to keep a few guys with him as well so he will so he can do he can dish more damage because against these chaos warriors and beastmen you know they're very strong they have really good armor so even big crunch the rat ogre is going to be it's not the easiest thing for him to get um, to break through their armor and cause some damage. Um, so I'm just getting everybody up. I'm kind of moving around. I think about going for the foul here, and I do. 
The foul is very risky to go for. It was only a 17% chance of getting one. I didn't get it. The referee didn't see it, which is very lucky because he can get sent off for that and miss the rest of the game. So it was a bit risky, but um, a chance my arm. So it's turn 7 for the unstoppable mashers. After a bit of moving, um, they have a guy here getting up and going for an attack. He just uses the push. Or that's all he gets on the dice. Oh, I need to get a drink because this game, this game was really good. Um, so you got the push, then you have guys here hitting the attack. See, so getting the, they're getting a lot of pushes in their dices, which is excellent for me. And not getting any injuries, no guys are getting stunned. They're just getting pushed around, and that's it. I will take that any day. Um, here we have one of the other guys getting hit. I think it's one of my storm vermin, uh, Altis creep, and it's good. He's going to get pushed back. Um, another pushback which leads, which nothing comes out of it, the ball here couldn't run, it goes to my turn 8, this is my final turn of the, uh, the first half, so I had to make sure to keep this guy blocked in, I, had, I went for a hit here, and I got him, so he's going to get hit, he's going to get knocked down, he's going to lose the ball, um, and that leaves it open in the field, it doesn't land on anyone, now I remember correctly, this part's pretty funny, it's pretty crazy here, this is how hard it is to get the ball, so I make the dodge to move up to get the ball, don't catch it, their guy doesn't catch it, goes back to my guy, doesn't catch it, comes back to my gutter runner again, he has the mutation where he has the extra arms, so it makes it a lot easier for him to catch, he still doesn't catch it, and I'm really happy with that, that first half is perfect for me, it's over now, and um, I stopped there from getting a touchdown, I managed to get one first, that plan, we're receiving the ball, and going for the touchdown straight away, early in the game it worked, so first half was really good, and um, I got two injuries, um, which is not too bad, I had enough subs to cover it, when you start losing guys and you don't have subs to cover, cover it, where, or you're losing guys to death, because it's, it's expensive to buy players as well, you know, so I'm kind of lucky so far, I was, I was so worried about playing, fighting this thing, or fighting, <laughs> I'm so worried about playing against this team because they're so tough, they can do so much damage and they really come out in this second half, in their first turn, they come out fighting, they get one hit there, they're getting another hit here, one guy's getting knocked out, it's going to be a big hit when it goes to the slow motion, is he stunned, what happened with this guy, Altis Creep gets stunned, Altis Creep can't catch a break in this game, so you have another guy here now that got a pushback, um, that's a little bit of a break for me after two big hits. And they have the ball, they're in the back, so they're going to start surrounding their guy now. That's what usually happens, start surrounding the ball carrier. And that's fine for, by me, the guy can't move with the ball, he's already moved this turn. And surprisingly he moves one of the guys from the back forward. And I think these guys might have that little bit of extra comfort where they don't have to have it. the ball carrier surrounded because they're so bulky they can take a hit. And and then it's turn 9, so this is my first turn of the second half. Uh, trying to, again, I'm using that. I've moved guys all close to each other. I'm not going for the ball carrier because I don't want to sing single guys out um, and trying to get it because I will. I know I will lose one of them. Um, so I'm keeping the kind of mob mentality, keeping them all together, getting the bonuses off each other. And I think that tactic has really worked in this game so far. So I'm trying to get a hit with Big Crunch here, the Rat Ogre, and trying to decide which one to go for, but I think in the end I said it doesn't really matter, as long as I can get a decent hit on one of them. Um, so I get a push, yeah I get a push here, but when he gets a push he gets a frenzy, which means he has to travel forward with him, but then he gets to another dice to attack, and then unfortunately you get the Skull Dice, and the Skull Dice means when you get that you take a hit yourself, and he has this skill, which is a bad one unfortunately, it's a loner rule, you can't use a team reroll. So unfortunately, I take the hit and it's a turnover to the Unstoppable Masters, it's their turn 10 of the second half. Uh, their big guy, the big bull ogre, I'm pretty sure is what he's called, or Minotaur, he's their big version of a rat ogre, he coming, he's moving down to try and do a little bit of damage, he has the frenzy rule as well, he gets the push and he gets a big hit, that's even a bigger one again when it goes into slow motion, Scruff is KO'd, now I do use the apothecary here, I do remember that, because I wanted players on the pitch, um, it was getting a bit, it was the second half of the game, I didn't mind using it now, so I wanted to keep bodies on the pitch if you will, so it comes out to my turn 10, their ball carrier is after moving down, um, again I'm keeping guys together, I'm trying to push maybe a little bit more in the centre, a little bit to the right, because I know they can 
when an opponent in Blood Wall, they can go like way to the left and then all of a sudden they're all going to the right. So I get a big hit here from one of my linesmen, or that's a, uh, yeah, one of the linesmen, and I get a stun, which is excellent for me. It gets one of the guys down on the ground, one less thing to worry about. And when I try to move, I take another hit here. Unfortunately, oh, Lich is stunned, and that is a turn over to the Unstoppable Masters. So it's not too bad. What turn is it now? It's going to be turn 11 for them. They're still in their own half, just about. Um, and obviously here you can see they've moved down. Um, and their guy tries to run past, but he gets hit by my guy and he misses the dodge. So he gets a hit there. They use the reroll and he still gets hit again, which is perfect. That was a quick turn. They moved a couple of guys down. They didn't do any damage. I get to turn over to Clan Scurry for turn 11. So now I kind of had to go into the defensive mode a little bit to really push them down. Usually I like to leave one or two guys in the back, or at least one. Because it's just like a safety thing, especially against elves, because they're so fast. But I was I was able to kind of keep them all together and move them back, keeping that uh, mob mentality. I tried to move faster, get one more guy down. Unfortunately I couldn't, I couldn't get the dodge. And he goes down. And that leads to one yet and again another turnover to the Unstoppable Masters. It's their turn 12 of the second half. So here they're trying to get some damage done. He gets the block skill when he's using that. My guy goes down. They're obviously trying to make a way through here. Uh, he's already moved to the ball carrier so he can't move again this turn. They're taking hits on the left flank here where we are. And it's going to be a big hit from the Minotaur. That's and it's on my storm vermin, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's Scrut, he's gonna be stunned, so he's gonna be down for two turns. And um, their guy rolls to attack, he gets the skull dice on himself, he gets stunned from that, which is even better again. And that's gonna be a turnover. This second half is nothing but turnovers. It's it was really good playing it like this, it was really anything can happen. So I move my guys over to the right to, to support whoever is gonna be coming over to attack. As you can see, they're all kind of close together. I come in for the blitz, I get a hit. Do I get a hit? I can't see. No, I get a push. So I push the guy up. Um, and I stay where I am. Do I stay? No, I follow. I go with him. So he's pushed back up. And my blitz is done. Um, and then it goes to turn 13 for the Unstoppable Masters. They're all moving over to the, to the right. They're doing a lot of damage here. The Beastman gets a big hit on one of my linesmen. He's probably stunned. Yeah, Lish is stunned. I get a lot of stuns, so that's fine. As long as I'm not getting injuries or deaths, I will take it. It's turn 13. I'm still holding my defensive line. They're not getting through yet. And um, finally, I'm able to get big crunch up. He has a rule where it's wild animal, uh, which is a chance he mightn't do anything. And he got that a couple times. So I come in for the blitz here with the with the. Uh, Go to runner, he comes in, he gets the hit, I'm going to choose to follow to see can I catch the ball when he drops it. It, dro it falls exactly to the right to my other go to runner, um, and he is going to, now, this is where I start getting a bit uh, scared because I can't, I've already moved with that go to runner who's caught the ball, I can't move again this turn, so all I can think of is I'm just going to have to surround him and hope they don't do nothing in their turn 14. So that's what I'm doing, I'm just moving everyone up and trying to get this guy to hit him. To try and push him back or knock him down if anything. But uh, I get both down, which is, he gets a hit, but if he has the block card or a block skill, nothing's going to happen. So nothing does happen here, two of them just take a hit, but they just shrug it off. So I surrounded my good runner, turned it over to turn 14 for them. And I was eagerly waiting to see what happens here. I was petrified. I was thinking if I can hold on to this ball, I know that good runner can run up that pitch. I know he can. So he re-rolls because he gets two skull dice. He gets a, a, a hit, but I get a dodge skill on this one. So I do dodge it. I get a little bit worried here because I'm right on the edge. I really don't want to get pushed off. It's twice in one game. Um, but I know he's already charged, so he can't get another guy to run around and hit me in this turn. Lish gets another bad hit, and he gets a KO from a Beastman. Their guys are going to be getting a lot of experience from getting these KOs and everything in this. Um, um, this was... Yeah, he died. Oh, I jumped up, took a hit, he got stunned. So that was turn 14 for me. It's coming to the end of the game, and I was really thinking, how am I going to work this? Am I just going to run the good runner up? stall for a turn and then get the touchdown and i think that was kind of the safe way to go at least get it out of my own half and um, so what i'm thinking here is while i hit this guy because if i try and run with that gutter runner he's going to try and hit me and if i don't dodge that ball's dropped and 
there's, an, there's loads of them guys around there that can pick it up and get a touchdown from it. So I get a push on this guy and push him out of the way so I don't have to worry about trying to dodge when I'm running with the gutter runner. It's Nick again with the ball. So if you see the two square dice, or the two squares of the dice, not that means you're going for it. Uh, you have to roll a 2 plus on the dice when you're going past each one and I do make it so I'm really happy because I'm really far up in the pitch now and I know that I can't be caught none of the guys can travel up this far in one turn they can get close but they're not and when I hit this guy and I get a KO that's the closest guy to the ball so I wanted to hit him uh, to take him out to try and stop me from getting the last touchdown of the game and here I am moving uh, a guy close to Big crunch to Rat Ogre to support him when he's getting the attacks on the Minotaur because I am going to go for a big one on one fight here with the Minotaur. And, and I do roll, and there you can see the wild animal. I think all in this game I've got about four wild animals, five maybe, and it's just really bad. It's unfortunate. And then when I try and do a blitz with another guy coming around, I don't get the dodge and I get hit down, and it's a turnover for them. Now at this stage, I'm just thinking, don't get any injuries. Just keep it a gutter runner. It's already gone switched to my turn already. They've already moved. It didn't do anything. So as you can see, I've moved at the top of the screen. I've moved the gutter runner right up to the edge of the field. And I tried to go for the big fight in the middle of the pitch with the Minotaur and the Rat Ogre. Two of them knock each other out. Um, Contar, their Minotaur gets an injury. My guy gets an injury, but there's no long term effect. So that is fine. It's the end of the game. I'm happy with that. It's a turnover. It goes to the unstoppable Masters. They're not going to win anything. They can't do anything now. They didn't injure anyone, so that was it. I took a few hits, but nothing serious. So I jump into, str I go straight to Nick, and I just go straight for that touchdown, and I get a 2 nil victory. I am super happy with this. Two touchdowns in one game I, against the Unstoppable Masters. I'm so happy to get a win against these. This, the, the cheerleaders are out. They're celebrating in the brand new stadium that's up, built up another tier. It's a level 2 1 now. So it is so awesome. The referee, the goblin blows the whistle for the final time of the game. And that's it. We're all celebrating. The guys are, are all delighted. I'm so happy with that. I know I've said that a couple of times before, but it's a great way to start the season. I get my coach level is level 9. I got 13 experience in this. And I think Mammoth got man of the match, if we can see after this. Um, I'm not too sure what the coach level does. Um, the gold piece is reward. It rolls the dice to see what you get. You get one re-roll out of it. I got a two, so it gives me 30,000. So I said, oh, let's re-roll it. You know, that's the worst. You're not going to lose much. I got a three, so I got an extra 10,000. So that's not too bad. An extra 10,000 added on to what I got with the two. Um, see their jump tuck or man that I can't really see from here. Got man in the match. Um, they got 12 armor breaks, they got no passes, no touchdowns, no interceptions, zero deaths, which I am super happy with. Um, and then at the end of the game, Nick did go up a level, he got enough SPP, which is experience in this, to go up a level. Um, so what happens then is you roll two dice and you get to choose from the list of what you get to pick. I think if you get like a really high roll, you get mutations. But I got a, a tree, so that gives me from general and agility. Um, and Nick is a good runner, so I wanted to keep with the agility maybe um, To see what I could give him. There is a bit of a choice there So I got the kickoff return from the general one, which is what great for um, a good runner and of course who else is going to get uh, Enough experience to go up a level uh, Big crunch the red ogre. I was super happy to see him get a, a level up at the level 2 um, I don't know how he got enough SPP because for he got like four turns in this game where he didn't do anything. He just got wild animal. But anyway, that's it for this game. If you guys really like this Blood Bowl and you're happy to see Season 2, make sure to hit the like button and comment below. The feedback is always important. I love getting feedback off you guys. And um, yeah, make sure to show your, show your support for Clan Scarvey and Blood Bowl Season 2. And um, subscribe if you haven't. So once again, thank you guys for watching. It's a great start to the season. Keep an eye out for uh, game two of the season. And it will be just as exciting as this one, I promise. So thanks very much. And I will see you guys next video.